Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. The real you is your what? Spirit, soul, or body? The real you is your spirit. Your spirit never desires to sin and will never sin. This is who we really are. But we, we, we treat that like, oh, well, that's just a fantasy. That ain't the truth. And, and you don't even know how true that is until you die. Because when you die, the only thing, your body, you, you're going to move, here it is, you're going to move out of the house. You are now going to become aware of the real you. Death it's going to be so awesome because you won't even know it really happened. You're going, when you move, you're going to step out the house and you, if you, maybe he'll let you look back and see, that's my body. But you're going to literally, you're going to literally move from one dimension to another dimension, and you're going to slip out of your physical dimension house into a spiritual house with your real you, and everything now is more real than what you thought was real when you were in your physical body. That's why you are not ever be scared of death. And that's what the devil will put on you. Like, ah, wait a minute. Whether here or there. Paul said it like this. He said, tell the truth, I don't know at this point whether it's going to be more beneficial for me to stay here with y'all <laughs> or go over here where I know about it. And then he started looking at the world and say, oh, Jesus, I need to stay here. <laughs> All right, now watch this. All right, so the real you... Res this is so amazing. The real you resembles your earth suit. It's kind of like the pattern for your earth suit came from you, the real you. Mm. I know you can't see it right now, but I got to see it. The pattern of this came from your real outfit. When, you, when we see one another in heaven, we're going to see one another at the best possible state of appearance that we have ever seen one another, maybe in your 20s. <laughs> but you're going to look at one another and like, Francine, that's you? <laughs> you're going to say, girl, don't it look good? <laughs> and that's the pattern that I both show. I, I, I have evidence that's just popping in my mind. The physical tabernacle is an exact duplicate of the heavenly tabernacle. The heavenly tabernacle doesn't look like the physical tabernacle. The physical tabernacle took its pattern from the heavenly tabernacle. Just like your physical body got its pattern from your spiritual We got to be careful, boy. Be, we get being got raptured up in here. You get to listen to the stuff, we know. Somebody said, what happened? That'd be so cool, cool if God gave us two seconds to just woof, woof. Whoa! Whoa! Do it again. Woof, woof. Hey! Tear this church up. Everybody be on this. Hey! <laughs> K 
Now, since we are still in our bodies and in this world, we might still sin. There's really no might to it because 1 John 1 and 8, not that, see, here's the thing about it. You think you're going to still sin the same sin. You got new creation in you. You are transforming. You're transforming out of certain things in your life into certain things you hadn't been in. So when I say we still sin, I don't think you're still sinning like you used to sin. All right, how, how you used to sin was based on the nature that you had to sin. But since you've been born again, the sin has diminished in how it looks with somebody who's perfect. Because the new creation is working on your desires. That's his way in. I'm working on taking away the old want-tos, giving you some new want-tos, and some of you can take a little look back and you can't even figure out why is it that I don't want the thing I used to be addicted to? Why is it that I don't want to even say the stuff I've always used to say? Because you got the new creation releasing impulses and impacting your desire, the Bible says, to do what pleases God. The new creation wants you to do what pleases God. See, I got to be careful because I got a, genera a generation that's looking for uh, 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 an excuse to want to be saved and fleshy at the same time. Uh-uh. That ain't what they're saying. Uh -huh. You know, they're they playing lawyer. They, they're looking down the contract and see if they can find a loophole. And, I, and if you understand what I'm preaching to you this morning, you don't need to find no loophole. You just need to have faith in the transformation. All right, so he says here, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, yes, you're born again, and, and, and this may be hard for some people to hear, uh, yet yeah, you're born again, and in this world, uh, you might still sin. You're going to have some behavior issues that are still in the process of transformation. That's why you don't want to judge people so quick, because they might, they might, you might be judging them in transformation. In other words, you're judging them based on what you knew about them in the past, but they're no longer there. As Christians, they have made several steps from that by the training of the new creation, and it ain't even in them no more. Be careful how you look at people. All right, look at 1 John 2, 1 through 2. 1 John 2, 1 and 2, he says, My little children, these things write I, write I unto you that you sin not. All right, so he's writing. He's, he's saying, here's the best. I'm writing to you that you sin not. But then watch this. He says, and if any man sin, okay, we have an advocate, someone who's, 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 who's going ahead of us and, 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 and pleading for us. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So he says, okay, so I've made provisions for your sinning while you're being transformed. He says, here's what you do. Remember that he is the propitiation for our sins. Remember that he is the ransom that has been paid for our sins. In other words, remember that Jesus has already taken and paid for your sins. Or, or better, better yet, watch this. Remember that you are no longer, let me say it like this. Remember that you no longer have the nature to sin. So it says, if you're misbehaving, remind yourself, that's not my nature. Wow. Something happens. That's not my nature. What happens if you spend the next five, or, or five years saying, you know, something happens, and you're like, that's not my nature. You are realizing I am no longer subject to the nature. The, the price has been paid for me to be free from the old man. 
The price has been paid for me to be free from the sin nature. The price has been paid for me to receive the new creation. I no longer have the, nat the nature to sin, so when I do sin, I remind myself that's not my nature. Say it out loud. That's not my nature. <laughs> Somebody said, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. You mean if I cuss her out? What do I do? Well, first of all, you apologize, and then you remind yourself and them, that's not my nature. Well, if it ain't your nature, why you, why'd you do it? I, I still need to continue to work on my software. And you know what you do? You be quick to forgive. <laughs> he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only. Now, this is so awesome, but also, He's paid the price for the whole world, and he's paid the, paid the price for the whole world's sin. Now, I don't know if the whole world is going to take advantage of it, but I know you and I who are born again, we have taken advantage of it. And so if the whole world wants to take advantage of it, there is provision for the whole world to take advantage of it. So thank God you and I have taken advantage of it. Amen? But our new creation, even what I just said, even what we just read, our new creation will never sin. So let the new creation dominate your whole body. Let the new creation dominate your soul so you can live according to who you really are. You will never live in this physical life according to who you really are, which is your new nature, which is your righteous new creation. See, I, 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 I like to break this down because I want to know how. I was like, are you telling me to do this how? And then I found out, okay, how? What, 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 how? The new creation is trying to impart and impact you, trying to impact your body. The new creation is working all the time to try to infiltrate that software. You got to understand now, the key is what are we going to do about this software, our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions that have, have gotten so used to the dictates of the old nature. If we don't do nothing with this, even though we are now perfect, if we don't do nothing with this in this life, Similar behaviors and sin continues. Oh, y'all, y'all got to hear me now. So you, you start hearing what's wrong with the church. Somebody said, I, I, I ain't no problem with me going to whatever this church or this church because all churches are the same. See, that's where you're missing it. Because churches were supposed to take on this task that I'm describing to you right now, this. You, 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 know, what, you know what the Bible calls this? The flesh. That wrong way of thinking, that, that software influenced by the old nature. You know what your issue is? You know what my issue is? You know what the issue of the whole world is? When you stop renewing your mind, something that needed to be taken care of has never been taken care of because you have not done a complete wipe of that old software from that old sinful nature. So how do I let the new creation dominate me? By renewing your mind. How do I, how do I get to a place where I'm not being dominated by the old nature. The old nature is gone, but the residue of that old nature resides here. Look at Colossians 3, 9 and 10. The residue resides here. And so if we're, if we're coming to church and we're not learning and we're getting a bunch of tomfoolery and, and we like what we feel in our body and, and, we, and we like to jump and scream and hop and chala and you're not renewing your mind to think differently, then the struggle continues between the new nature in you and your behavior outside of you. 
Colossians 3, 9 and 10. Lie not, not, not lie down, not, but quit lying. <laughs> lie not one to another, seeing, no, no, notice what he said, seeing that you put off the old man. What is he saying? The old nature, lying is a result of the old nature. We had the nature to lie. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. The old man, he's saying lying here is, is one of the deeds of your old nature. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, that new creation, which is new, which is renewed in the knowledge, is renewed after the image of that, of him that created him. We are never going to see what some are convicting you of if we don't rightly divide the word of truth and renew our mind with this gospel of grace. It won't happen. And I will preach this if everybody leaves. It won't happen. You, you somehow, coming to church has got to be a session of a, a white session where each time you come, we ought to be wiping something else from your soul that was influenced by that old nature because you don't have that nature no more. But you still have the behavior. Why? It's a, it's a soul wipe. It, it, it's it, like I use this as a cell phone. It's time for an update. You can't get a... We keep trying to use the same software for a new laptop and expecting a new output. Won't happen. Even though it's brand new, you still gonna get the same outputs. It's not like this is the first time I've talked about this. It is that every time I talk about it, Satan figures out a way to belittle and cause this to be subtle where we get to focus in on all of the religious stuff and we don't stick to the facts. Taff and I were counseling somebody yesterday and we said, don't let the emotions get in the way. Write it down. Stick with the facts. Because you know how it is. You start arguing about something and then you, you'll leave the facts and then talk about, oh, I always, oh, I always, what about the time I did that? And that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Stick with the facts. And we don't do that at church. We come to church and just see how I'm going to feel today. Oh, I feel it real good. Oh, I really feel good today. Oh, I know. I, I know God going to answer my prayer today because I felt like praying this morning. You, you, bruh, you all, anything the devil can do to keep you out of renewing your mind with the Word of God, which means you need to post yourself up somewhere where your mind is being renewed properly with the right information in the software. You know what happened? We got born again and started renewing our mind with the wrong stuff. We started renewing our minds with rules and not removing, renewing our mind with the Savior. And so we care more about keeping rules than we do about loving people. And sometimes, if you didn't keep the rules, I ain't going to love you. Did you pray this morning? How much did you sin this week? Uh-uh, can't feed you. The Bible says, touch that to unclean. You look like you're real dirty today. That ain't right. Now you have a religious software that is based on your self-performance, your self-effort, and Jesus ain't nowhere. It's based on your law-keeping, and Jesus ain't nowhere. So you're you, have, you have him in you. You know something wrong, because even when you do that, talking about touch not the unclean, the impulses of the new creation like saying, no, nah, that ain't right. That ain't right. And you know what you have to do? You start going and try to find more scriptures 
and, and, and rules to make you feel better about what you did while you completely ignore and harden your hearing to the impulses of the new creation on the inside of you that says something ain't right about what I just did. So who wants to come to church and learn stuff? I ain't talking about y'all. Stop. <laughs> Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 in the NLT. Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Now I get it. You know, you know what he's talking about? This, this, this God that's on the inside of you. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Paid the price, was the propitiation for your sins, moved into you, gave you a new creation, a new nature, a nature to live righteously. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behavior of and the customs of the world, but let God, let, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then, as you allow him to change the way you think, software issue, then you will learn to know God's will for you which is going to be good and pleasing and perfect. I can't tell you the number of people who are still asking, God, show me your will. God, show you my will, your will. And you know what he's saying? I want to, but you won't swipe and update the software. You can't hear me, you can't know me, because you're trying to hear and know me with the thinking that has come from your old nature.